Do you hate being poor? Do you want to be rich? Like me. If so, head over to Messy Modding Store for all your gaming needs where you can get GTA 5 cash and rank, GTA 5 modded accounts, and many more. And if you're having doubts, look at all these happy customers. So GTA Online was first released on the 1st of October 2013. That's ages ago, that's eight years ago. Now of course in that time there's been quite a few updates and in each of these updates there's been a lot of content that's been added to the game. Many of these can be considered good additions such as the different ways of making money but this video will talk about the worst ones. Added in the Doomsday Heist update on December 12th, 2017, the auto cannon is probably one of the most hated things ever added to GTA. This weapon is the epitome of what GTA Online has become. It was once a feature that only modders had where you could instantly explode someone from across the map, but I guess Rockstar thought about number one and found a way to monetize such an overpowered feature. With $750,000 going to each shot, if you have the money, you can kill anyone with only a three second delay. There's so many things wrong with this, so let's just name a few. First of all, how do you dodge it? So there's like four things you can do. Let's go passive, hide in the ground, go inside an apartment or something like that, or go off radar. Now in a world where tryhards already cared about 1-0s and cringe stuff like that, usage of the orbital cannon spread like wildfire. Very quickly, almost every single PvP session became a cesspool of people in passive mode, off radar, or in the facility, or scared of being cannoned. Now it was already sort of like this, but if you look at the minimap, there's still a lot of people that I could fight. And back at this time, the main reason why people went in passive mode was because they were AFK, not because they were hiding from an autocannon. I mean, there were people still using passive mode to passive pop and stuff like that, but way more people used passive mode after the autocannon was added. Also, another thing about this session, people really went off radar. Gameplay still wasn't clean, but after the autocannon got added, it's just a whole nother game. Another reason why this is a horrible addition is the fact that you can't die in your facility. You can join the session, cannon someone and leave without the risk of dying. You can also get a refund if you miss your shot, meaning you're pretty much guaranteed a kill. Also if you get cannoned you spawn at the nearest hospital which is incredibly annoying, I mean you can't continue on with your fight even after you die. Now there used to be a glitch where you could shoot people out of the facilities which was fun while it lasted, but now it's full on god mode when you're inside your facility, there's no way anyone's going to get you out unless they've basically got mods. I could rant about the auto cannon for hours but honestly I don't know what Rockstar was thinking and they're not going to remove it out of the game either because so many people spent their money on it. At this rate if Rockstar keep giving people the powers of modders, who knows what they'll give us next. Maybe a legit way of teleporting? Oh wait they did with heist warps. Maybe explosive ammo? Oh wait they did that as well. Honestly I don't know, I just want GTA 6 to not be like this. Speaking of turning points of GTA Online, another thing that was added to the game that also ruined it was VIP CEO abilities. So you may be wondering, oh why is CEO VIP abilities on my list? And it's because all these things. Drop EST, the fact that you can drop EST at your feet in an instant, literally you press the button. And people can get really quick at it, literally you drop EST like really quick. And then people with macros can drop EST basically instantly. And even on console, it's not even that hard to drop BST. But yeah, the fact that people can do that constantly just makes more people want to use BST if it's that easy to do. It's before, when it was just Brucey, you had to call up Brucey, you had to run to the BST location. And it's just a lot of effort, and basically no one used BST back then. But as soon as Rockstar had the this, ability to do this, like basically every single player that I know uses BST, even bad players, they just figure out that BST. Gives you a little bit of extra damage, gives you extra health. Basically, the only way someone can beat you if they don't have BST and you do have BST is if they're just if you're just awful. So if you're competent at the game, you're basically going to win all the time with BST. The other thing, ghost organization, three minutes off radar. I think that's way too much. If they did it like a minute, like normal off radar, that'd be fine. But for PvP, it just sucks. I can see how it can be useful for like missions and stuff like that. Sorry if you can hear the outside, but yeah, I can see how it's useful for like missions and shit like that. But honestly, it makes PvP like not as fun because you see in the bottom left, someone's organisation is going off radar, and you're constantly watching your back, or you just have to go passive or something like that. It's just not a fun way to play the game. What is a good thing? Bribe authorities. This should be three minutes. So yeah, all to kind of change PvP made people play more off the radar, more abusing passive mode, that sort of thing and VIP abilities basically introduced more people into unfair play like using BST. Like people that wouldn't usually use BST or off radar, they now just have it in their menu. It's really easy to access and it started converting people into playing dirty. Now it wouldn't be a video about bad additions to the game without mentioning the oppressor. <laughs> so 
to this vehicle is quick, it's quite maneuverable, agile, it's got a boost, like a rocket boost, it can shoot homing missiles and even better homing missiles than like the laser and hydra because they pretty much always hit and you can spawn it at your feet, like there's literally no downside to this vehicle and that's why even though it's a good vehicle technically, it's going in my list because it actually has a ruined PvP because it's so good, loads of people use it, it's really hard to snipe people off especially on console and it just means as soon as you see one of these coming your way and you're trying to do like a job or something you know you're pretty much dead because it's so small it's hard to shoot with a laser it can move up and down left and right really quick which makes it hard to shoot with a sniper and like I said the homing missiles that lock on are basically guaranteed to hit you so it's just the most annoying vehicle in the world you can see in the top left it says destroy the nearby nightclub, nightclub goods like it's literally just telling me to grieve people so when you've got vehicles like this, which make it super easy to grief, and messages like that, just telling like people that have no idea what's going on in the game, what to do, they just see that message, like, yeah, I need to kill that, destroy that, and it just ruins everyone's fun. There is another vehicle that is really annoying, and that's the RC tank or RC car, basically any RC vehicle. So as RC cars, you can literally access them from your inventory at basically any point, and then you're just off radar. In Especially with the RC tank, you're just in a vehicle that's weaponized, off radar, there's literally nothing they can do to you. Also, if someone does end up destroying your RC car, it doesn't count as a kill for them. You just end up going back to the same place you ordered it from. And then when you do respawn, you just order another RC vehicle, and then you're basically unable to die. The way Rockstar could fix this is if, like in Call of Duty, where you call like an airstrike or something like that, or something you have to, something you have to control, your character stays in the same position, and you just get the view of this. So if you have the view of this, but you can also see your character, and you have to make sure that you hide your character properly in order to use this, so you don't die, that'd be a good balance, I think. So now I've pointed out the big ones. I'm going to go on a quick fire round, explaining changes that I dislike about GTA. Firstly, the removal of Easy Way Out. I know this is controversial, but having it in the game allowed many different styles of PvP to thrive, such as base or beach or weapons. Granted, it was very annoying to fight against at times, but the sticky bomb being used instead is hardly a better alternative. As mentioned before, heist warping is ridiculously annoying. If someone wanted to actually do the heist themselves, then yeah, sure, it's useful, but as always, it's just being abused by dry hazard griefers as a way of stopping themselves from dying. Any sort of danger? Yep, yeah, just teleport away to your apartment. This is even worse than Easy Way Out, and I'll stand by that. There's also constant changes to the interaction menu which is annoying, as in fights I might want to buy ammo quickly. Unfortunately, after almost each update, the amount of up or down arrows to press and combination of presses always changes. Very frustrating. But I think the problem with GTA at the moment is Rockstar will add something overpowered and then will add something even more overpowered to counter it and it just becomes a constant battle between adding overpowered things and then eventually we get shit like the orbital cannon that no one wants and it's just ridiculously overpowered and just ruins the game. Oh well this is the end of my video, drop a like if you enjoy, also follow my Instagram at Mark